Hi guys, welcome to our first episode for our tutorial series. Today we will be discussing how to successfully operate a very complex machine by breaking it down into simple steps. We hope you guys enjoyed this video and we always appreciate you guys to like and subscribe as always. Today we have the Roland R88 audio recorder and mixer. With 8 audio channels on the left and 8 faders on the face of the recorder, this is an amazing tool to use on your next short film, podcast or music adventures. Our team recently used this for our short film Did You Miss Me which will be releasing in the upcoming months and the trailer will be shortly arriving onto our channel. To keep updated do follow our Instagram and Twitter for more details to follow. Before we turn on the mixer it is important to note that there are different methods to turn the machine on. If you turn the mixer to the left, you will identify the main cord adapter on the bottom left side of the corner. Here is where you can place the charger wire into and connect it to a power source. As this is close to being always an industry standard recorder, you will notice a switch beside the charger port. Here it mentions AC adapter and external battery. If you move the switch to AC adapter, you are allowing the mixer to connect to the charger that the mixer comes with. Now if you turn the switch to the right onto external battery, you are now connecting the mixer to an external form of power source, meaning that instead of the mixer receiving power through the corded charger, it will now be run on batteries. Now if you face the mixer down, you will see the position at where the external batteries need to be stored. Once you unscrew the top and open it up, you will find that 8 batteries are required to run the mixer. The reason to why you are offered these options of direct current power or external battery power is because, well as a filmmaker, a sound recorder's environment will vary from being indoors where he is close to a power source to charge directly from or either will be stranded in the middle of nowhere where he will require external batteries to run the system. So you do have to be wary if you are using this for exteriors, you are required to use a lot of batteries, so bring a lot of them. As you can currently see, 8 are needed. At the current ones I have, they run out in around 30 minutes. So choose a good brand and bring a lot of them to your shoots. Now understanding the different methods of sourcing power to the mixer, it is very important that you now understand where your data that you record is stored and where your input audio devices must connect to before you click or even think about recording. Firstly, as you can clearly observe on the left side of the mixer, there is an icon that represents the SD slot. You move the cover temporarily and place the SD card inside. Moving on to where your input devices connect to, you now have to look at the right side of the mixer where you can observe that there are 8 audio channels that individually connect to the labelled faders on the face of the mixer that we will discuss in a short while. To make sure audio from your input device enters through your mixer, make sure that the channels you desire to use are switched to on and any channel you do not want to use are off. Now it's all about getting this piece of kit up and running and I'll be switching the power source to AC adapter requiring me to attach the charger into the port and I'll have to connect it to a plug. Now you will need to flip the mixer to its main control panel face and at the top left corner you will observe the power switch. Flick it to the right and the system begins to turn on. The most important thing after turning the system on you now have to format the card. Just as a side note, the only times you format is at the start of your shoot or whenever you swap your SD card to a different card. If you repeatedly format the card, you will lose your data and that's something that won't help anybody. Coming back onto the topic of format to apply that change, you will need to click on the menu button on the right side of the interface. Now you will find a lot of setting controls. From here, click the memory setting and at the bottom right side there is a separate icon that is labelled SD card format. When clicking onto that you will be alerted with a warning mentioning all data will be deleted. If you are happy to continue, click yes. This will take around 1-2 to two minutes of your time. Now it's all about understanding the functions on this side of the mixer. Firstly, Observing the touchscreen mini monitor, whenever you intend to record, the circle must always be on the REC label on the top right side of the monitor. 
Once making sure that the circle is on top of that, you may click the record button on the dials at the right hand side. Once clicking the record button, it will visibly light up into the colour red. To stop recording, you click on the stop icon that you can see me clicking. To play a previous track is by clicking the play button in between the stop and record button. Once clicking it, you will see that the button lights up green. If you want to pause, you click the same button again and the green button begins to flicker. If you want to stop playing, you click the stop button on the left. And if you want to go back to recording, click the REC icon on the monitor. If you want to fast forward or backtrack, you will need to click on play and apply those settings here. There's also an option to connect your headphones to Bluetooth won't be accepted, instead the preferred are good noise cancelling headphones. Do excuse us using Sony, as our headphones are suited for phones we've got ourselves a converter. The master dial controls the volume of the whole set into your headphones and output, but that will be covered in future videos that we will discuss deeply into this device. Now, let's look closely at the functions on the left side of the mixer's interface. You have the power on button at the top left side, beside it is the hold switch. Now you have to remember once switching the hold to on, it freezes every function on the mixer temporarily. This is a great little function when it's a busy shoot and you're called to help somewhere else or you go to the loo or collect some lunch, instead of turning the mixer on and off, you can switch it to hold to keep all your settings safe from anyone tampering with your kit while your eyes and attention are focused elsewhere. Now looking at the switches beside hold is the slate options. Currently the switch is centre placed onto slate itself means that your mixer's interface is focused on correct settings to record a take. On its left is the mic option. To fully access this feature apply some headphones and hold onto it for 3 seconds and you begin to hear that the mixer begins to record your voice from the microphone fixed within the recorder. This is a great feature to verbally establish the taken shot numbers or mentioning whether the take was a false one or not. As you have many audio inputs connected inside, it's a great feature to get the sound recorders actively involved with the embedded microphone within the system. If you switch to the right side to tone, that noise will surprise you firstly, but it's just a pre-recorded noise that distinguishes from your live recordings. Some people I know apply the tone setting and switch the hold to on before they leave the mixer on its own, but I don't think for any beginners your focus shouldn't be too focused on the tone option. Below these switches are the hub of where sound is fully controlled. You have 8 faders as you can see for 8 input channels on the right side of the mixer, each fader connecting to its specified numbered channel. On each fader, there are 2 switches, one on top of each other. The top switch controls the volume of the audio, determining how loud or quiet the input sound will be. The switch below, or known as the bigger switch, controls the sensitivity. Here you can connect how loud the environment behaves during the recording. What I mean by this is do you want to isolate your actors or your voice from the background? If so, you lower the sensitivity so you can isolate the background. If you desire the opposite where you want the background to be just as loud as the main focus, you can increase the sensitivity, making the environment just as loud as your focus. If you want something in between, try playing around with the fader controls with a pair of headphones as you determine what's best for you. So yeah, in this video I won't jump into too much details of connecting different types of microphones with this mixer, instead I'll just jump briefly into showing you how I connect this mic that I use for my boom pole setups and it's what I'm using for this tutorial, and I'll show you how the mixer reacts to the new audio input. So with everything we've learnt, it's all about adjusting the audio to your liking. In doing so, remember to adjust the faders accordingly by manipulating the audio level switch and sensitivity. Hopefully in this video, you have learnt how to turn the mixer on in different ways, how to power the system on, format the card, record, play and stop recording or playing your tracks. I hope you now understand how to adjust the audio levels from peaking and how to control sensitivity. To inform you guys all the audio that has been recorded has been recorded using the Roland R88 where I have increased the audio level and reduced the sensitivity so you are unable to hear the hectic background that I am living with. This is an amazing sound kit 
that I used with the National Film and Television School and I've recently used this for a short film we've produced. So this is a must have whether you buy it, rent it or loan it out. We hope we educated you and if you were indeed educated, we hope you like and subscribe and let us know what else we should review. As in the title mentioned above, this is a basic tutorial on a very complex machine so if you were seeking an advanced tutorial on working the Roland, do let us know. Stay updated and keep safe, we hope you have a great day.